Yo, what up? It's Roger from the Mask Gorilla Podcast. And tonight, we're here with Convo. How you doing, man? What's up, dude? Not much, dude. What are you up to in LA right now? Right now, I am... I'm recording... I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm mad nervous for this interview, man. Uh, I'm recording for uh, for my new album. I'm like doing a bunch of work for that and just seeing all my homies. Uh, I just did a tour with Shinigami, Garden, um, Ninety Three Feet of Smoke, Fatsy, Savage Gasp, uh, Family Pet, etc. Like more and more special guests. And I was on two days of the tour, and that like led me to LA. So we've been kind of hanging out. Um, and then, yeah, just like predominantly working on the album, though. Because a lot of people just moved out here, right? Uh, yeah, and yes, yes, and no. I think a lot of them are planning on moving here. Mm-hmm. So I think Garden has plans to. Uh, I'm not sure if I should talk. I mean, I don't think I don't think it's like sensitive information. Yeah, like there 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 they're, are a few people. They're planning on it. They're living the Airbnb life. They're maybe yeah. checking out some apartments. Checking out some apartments. Well, um, probably not. They're probably just fucking around. And like, oh, we forgot to look at the apartments. <laughs> No, I mean, like, yeah, they're just right now, they're living the Airbnb life, I guess. And uh, I think they're all flying back to New York pretty, pretty mm-hmm. soon. Um, so are you in that Airbnb with them right now? No, no, I'm in a, I'm like in a whole different setup uh, with like, a, I just happened upon, like the, the story is too long, so I won't tell it, but like, I'm, I'm living, living, I'm here for like an, another week and a half in like a collective with a bunch of like platinum and diamond French producers wow uh that yeah i just like lucked out on and they're all really really down to earth and they don't view me as like below them because i don't have any accomplishment to that level oh wow Sick. they they view me as like a peer and i think that it's like it's pretty i don't know it's pretty just like refreshing to so like, it's not the have, same as american industry type. who stuff. have they produced for is it only french songs or they're like french people who yeah they're, they're, like Taylor they're, Swift? they're all like <laughs> no they're all diamond like in france with like massive uh, french rappers oh, and wow, unfortunately rap. i'm not super aware of french rap so Either. sorry but uh i'm i'm aware of like russian rappers but i'm i'm not aware of uh french rappers unfortunately wait so where are you from originally so i was born i was born and raised this is where people get shook. I was born and raised in Oakland, California. Um, well, born and raised in Martina, in a hospital in Martina's California. But I was raised in Oakland, California, and uh, and San Leandro. Like these two places are my upbringing. And how old are you? I'm I'm 22. Okay. Uh, and so I was I was like in those two places, and then I was also like raised in Russia. Like every summer, I would go there um, from the age of like five. Uh, to the age of 11 when my mom died like the whole summer i would spend in russia so like i would say that that's a pretty big part of my upbringing was your mom from russia no my my mom was an american uh and my dad's the the russian guy Uh, he was like yeah he's like a russian uh dissident like he was like fed up with russia and they threw him in prison and then the soviet union collapsed and then he dipped and came here and started a family and it didn't work out but you know I mean, it didn't work out in the sense of like they didn't stay together and stuff. But I'm I'm here, so I guess it I guess it worked out. So when did they? How old were you when they split up? Um, I was five months old. Uh, it's like a fucked up story. Like my my mom was always a really good person to me, but she was she was kind of. I know you're never supposed to like talk bad about your parents, especially if they're deceased. But I mean, if we're being realistic, she wasn't a very good person to my dad, and she just like one day took me and fled like my dad's house and he was not like an abusive dude he was just like a i don't know like a normal russian guy i guess uh and she just like fled left with me and like didn't tell him where'd she flee where, where to she was going. with you this place called san ramon and how old are you five months old oh, yeah, oh yeah. Okay. so i, I don't i don't remember months. anything wow. of, so like yeah so basically for all of my like memory of of my parents relationship they were always like apart so like to me that was always natural i know like with a lot of kids that have divorces when their parents are or when they are like 13 their parents get divorced when the kids are like 13 14 that that really affects them and stuff and i i wouldn't say that it's affected me uh to that same degree because it's all i know you know what i mean so you stayed with your mom yeah i was i was with my mom like one week and then my dad the next week so so yeah i i got also so like san leandro oakland and san ramon so and San Ramon's like this like really nice place, and then uh, San Leandro like my neighbors were like heroin addicts and fucking there were like gunshots all the time and shit. 
Uh, but I was like never under any like direct threat because I would just stay inside and my dad wouldn't let me outside. And then Oakland, when I was a kid, it was really rough. So we moved to Oakland mm. when my mom died when I was 11. And that's when like my formative years were in Oakland. Uh, and like my block was pretty rough when I first moved there. And like my school was rough and I had to like bring a knife to school and shit. And like I talk different because I had to like adapt. And I, I don't wow. know, it was like, it was like a very different setup. Uh, and then now it's gotten super gentrified. Like it's a completely right. different neighborhood. And like all the houses are like fucking worth millions of dollars and shit. Right. And they're like not good houses. It's just how like, like if you look up real estate inflation in LA or any, honestly, any part of like right, California. Because that's happening in Los Angeles as well. It's crazy. Yeah. Like shit box houses will be worth like $2 million. Insane. And it's just like, you know, it is what it is. Wow. Wait, can you scoot the mic a little bit? Yeah, yeah. There I thought go. it was picking me up pretty well. No, I thought yeah. it was like clipping. It's good. It's good. All right, cool. So you're 11. Was your mom sick? What happened? Damn. All right. Uh, I don't really talk about this a lot. Um, so, so my mom, I remember it very, like, very well. So like one night, I was five years old. My mom walks into my room. She like sits me down like, and says, I have breast cancer. And me being the funny little asshole I was, was like, is it contagious? And she laughed. And like, that's like, that's the, the last like very good memory I have. Um, and then like from that point, it was her battling with cancer. Uh, and it was okay from like the ages of five to eight. It was like, it was going all right. Right. Like it wasn't great. She lost her hair, went through chemo and shit. And I was the one who had to, you know, be strong for her. And you know, that like the cliche shit. And then one day when I was eight, um, I walked in on her like having like a this thing called a focal seizure, which is where like a part of your body is having a seizure. And she was just like, no, I'm fine. Like, go back to your room or whatever. And then I just spent the whole day just like crying in my room and like not knowing what to do because I was eight. Like, I don't know what the I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And this was like November 1st. This was the day after Halloween. And it was a Wednesday. And I remember it like it was wow. yesterday. And I like tried to watch the Pokemon Deoxys movie to like take my mind off it and shit. Like I, it was like, it was very clear to me. And then I just, my stupid eight year old brain didn't compute that like, you know, Hey, you should be calling like 911 and shit. And I ended up calling my dad and uh, he's like, dude, you fucking moron, like call 911. And then long story short, it turned out she had like a, a brain tumor, like the cancer had spread from her breast to her brain. And then it went to like liver and lung. And then it was just like this, like from eight to 11, it was like this slow decline into like the grave. And it was like the worst thing I've ever witnessed. Like, I don't know, like parts of her body would swell up and like she had to get like brain surgery and like, yeah, I mean, it was just like, it was like, it was suffering. So it's like a lot of people ask me like, why do you talk about it so much in your music? And it's just because like, how could I not? You know what I mean? Like it's, I understand that it probably like it's annoying to people to hear that like oh talking about his mom and rap songs all the time but it's just like it's such a big thing for me and it was like it's not that it was like a sudden thing and I had to just deal with it it was like it was a six year period of like me watching her suffer and like I had to get groceries for my mom and like I had to be responsible and like at the same time I was like fucking up in school and like getting in fights and like getting kicked out and like biting teachers. And I was just like a little asshole, you know? Dude, I bet. I mean, it's something no one should have to deal with, let alone an eight to 11 year old kid. Yeah, it was, uh, definitely, definitely don't wish it upon anyone. Definitely. But you know, it, it made me tougher. It made me stronger. And like, I don't know at the end of the day, like anyone who knows me knows like I'm pretty soft. Like I'm not, I act hard, but like, I'm like, I'm as soft as like baby shit, dude. Like I'm not a tough guy, but like that, that experience made me tough in the sense that like whenever something serious goes on, like I'm ready to deal with it like mm. always. But whenever something like not serious goes on, like I'm always like soft about it, but yeah, maybe I'm not talking too loud. Sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's, um, it's just, it's just something that happens, man. Like everyone has to eventually deal with some sort of death in their lives and it's never great but it is uh it's just part of life i guess so that's kind of how i've like come to see it you know just like something that i'm i'm grateful for in the sense that it like it made me stronger like just just trying to see some sort of silver lining out of it as opposed to just you know being all doom and gloom you know turning it into like art and music and i think that i've done it a bit of justice you know like always keeping it with me 
Well, yeah, I mean, it's fucking beautiful and incredible that you can even speak about it, let alone have it translate into art. But was that a gradual process? Like when you're 11 and it happens, what's life like after that? How's your school? Like what's so, going on? Yeah. So I, um, in school, like I was always like the bad, the class clown, the back, like I always wanted attention. And I think that's probably like why I enjoy music. But I don't, and I don't make music for attention. And I realize now after making it for so long that like, if I like fell off and no one gave a shit, I would still, I'd still always be like making tunes in my room. Like I don't give a fuck. But I realize that like having people pay attention to me is like really nice because it makes me feel like I'm doing something right. And as a kid, I wanted the same thing, but I didn't understand like what positive attention was. I only understood negative attention. Mm. Like I would, I would always be in like school always like before my mom died, whenever, like I was always just like the bad kid, the class clown, like acting up, like telling teachers to go fuck themselves. Like I said, like biting teachers and shit. And it's not something I'm proud of. It's not something that's cool, but it's just like how I was. And I wouldn't like bully kids. Like I would get bullied a lot. And that's probably why I would like act out. And then, um, <clears throat> Yeah, when she died, like, I really, like, went off the deep end. Like, I started making, like, bomb threats and shit. Like, classic, like, angry white kid shit. Wow. And, uh, I got, like, expelled from, like, this... I got expelled from one school, and then I went to another school, and I got expelled from there. So, how old? You were, like, 11 or 12 was, when all was, that was happening? Yeah. So, I was, uh, I was 11 when I got expelled from the first school, and then I didn't, like... I didn't get expelled, like, in the sense of, like... I, I got asked not to like come to graduation. Mm. Like they were like, here, you just take the last like five weeks off of school. You're in eighth grade. We'll let you graduate. Oh, okay. but like, wow. fuck off. Don't come back. Yeah. They're like, I was like they're oh. like, man, you got some stuff to figure out. Yeah. And I definitely did. You know, I mean, like I was always the way I coped with it and the way I cope with it now is like, it just like, I always make, I always have like a pretty grotesque sense of humor. Mm. And I just always like saying shit that like kind of, abrades people you know and i definitely think that like now as i've gotten older i've worked on that but when i was a kid i would just do it like incessantly just to like make f people feel like kind of the same discomfort that i mm. felt if that makes sense but and i don't think that's like cool or good and i don't like condone that activity were you in therapy or anything like what was going on yeah and like therapists couldn't handle me because wow. i was just like i was a bad fucking kid dude <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, yeah, therapists didn't didn't like dealing with me because like I would literally like intentionally mislead them like just cuz I didn't want to be straightforward with right. any of my actual issues. But now like like I said, now that I'm older, like I'm very open about things and like that's probably why I've been able to, you know, adjust to being a normal person. So did you come like did it get more figured out in high school like after middle school you're asked to leave was high school a little bit easier or was it more of the same in high school i was like a i turned into like a like a nerdy like fat kid type of thing mm. like i i developed like eating issues because of like that's how i dealt with like my mom's death i'm not trying to make this like a pity party like no. don't fucking yeah. don't pity me like don't feel bad for me like it's just like it's a real it's just, story yeah, it's just yeah. the way shit is you know and yeah in in high school i got like asked not to come back and then i moved to chicago for a year and I went to, uh, I lived on Howard Street. So, like, I legally lived in Evanston, but, like, I was actually on the border of Chicago. For those who, like, whatever, it doesn't, people are going to be like, you're not really from Chicago. Like, whatever, I don't give a fuck what you think. Um, and so I lived on, I lived on Howard, and I went to this place called Evanston Township High School, which is, like, the, it's, it was, like, a 2,000-plus person, like, high school. Wow. And I went there for a year, and they actually expelled me, too, because I was just such a piece of shit. Then I went back to my old school that asked me not to come back. And I was like, in I'll be on Oakland in, in California. Uh, and yeah. And then they were like, look, we asked you not to come back, but if you can, you know, behave better, which is like the most unlikely bet you're ever like, oh, how this guy, like, this guy so, has the worst track record. It's like, please a guidance counselor. Yeah. Someone step up something. to the fucking plate something. and help well, out. Well, the thing is I stepped up to the plate. I started like lifting weights and I started like taking, like accountability for my actions and shit. And like, I came back and after being like the nerd and the reject and like the fucking, like, you know, I had the, like the emo haircut and I was like overweight and shit. And I came back and I was like in shape and I was driven and I was like, 
Wow. I, be, I became one of like the popular like cool kids after being like nerd and like all the girls fucked with me like out of nowhere and then they all realize I'm still the same piece of shit that like I was before. And then like all that shit died after like two months, but it was, it was a good two months. Um, but, uh, but I stopped behaving like a complete piece of shit to like teachers and stuff. And like, I understood that you can be this abrasive person, but like do that with the people that you actually like, like, and trust, like mm. be, be yourself around the people that like care about you. Right. But don't necessarily like, you have to like kind of put up a facade around people that you can't fully trust, you know? And like, or like fully like you i can't be myself around like fucking teachers you know right I mean? like right. you can't just you gotta be the student you gotta flip on the student exactly switch exactly and it took me what fucking 14 15 years to learn that shit 16 years to learn that and then uh you know and then i went to college and like i was like i was not like there either and like where'd you go to school um in upstate new york at an unnamed location you can't say the name i mean i can it's just like it just makes me uh, okay I'll, I'll no i'll explain it this is gonna this, well i'm curious because i also went to college in upstate new york where did you go you i'm to gonna Syracuse, let you say it first i bet you no, went to Syracuse. no did you go to new Paltz? nope all right, okay yeah let's you just went to cut. university of rochester no we're no. not gonna, we're not gonna cut shit i'll, I'll i went I'll tell no you. no so i went to suny purchase oh okay cool, which cool, cool. if i mean i would hope it makes sense for those who don't know it's a very small art school yeah i went to so here i'm, I'm gonna say something so like i went to so my mom died right i'm, I'm gonna really this relates back my mom died she was in debt we were not a wealthy family but not that that means anything i was mm -hmm. like if i was wealthy i don't think it would affect like how people perceive me but I wasn't. And then she died, but she was really smart. Like, my mom was a smart person. She had this massive life insurance policy. So when she died, like, I got a shit ton of money that was all life insurance. None of her savings, because she didn't have any. She was in debt. But, like, this wow. massive life insurance policy. That and that, she'd been, like, that got... Since, like, day one, since she had cancer, she'd been, like, doing shit for her. And she had, like, And, like, lawyer. it was in your name. You're an only yeah, child? Yeah, and I'm an only child. I mean, I have a brother from my dad's side of the okay, family. He's right, 40 and doesn't give a fuck about me. My dad's 78. Like, it's like a... Yeah, my family's fucked up. But it's... uh. So you have this life insurance policy. I have this life insurance policy. What are we talking here? Six figures? Seven? Like, seven, yeah. Like, like a million dollars. Wow. And, and before we're like, whoa, rich kid... Like, I... All of that money was to go to my education. And plus, it's a trade literally no one would ever make. Yeah. I, no, dude. Like, if I could, I would literally give every limb of my body and every dollar I've ever made or that I have from this life insurance policy, which I, by the way, don't because I went to my school, which is what I was going to get into. Right. I, I would, for five fucking minutes to talk to my mom. Right. So like, with that being said, you shouldn't feel any sort of way. Yeah. Like, I don't know. People in the comments are probably going to be saying, like, mad I read the I doubt comments. It. I, I need doubt to stop it. reading comments, bro. I doubt it. Com but people so say the dumbest shit in the you comments. go. How do you end up in upstate New York? So I was just trying to get as far away from home as possible, and I was like, "Where do the weird kids go?" So here's where I went to school. I went to Bard, and I was like, I said, like Bard College, upstate New York, and I was like one of the most disliked kids there, and like because I was still a dick. But so Bard's a good school, right? Bard's, a, Bard's a, I, I okay. So I fa I could like actually failed classes in high school, but I had perfect test scores. Is and Bard's not a SUNY school, or is no, it? No, no, no. Bard's like a. It's like a private. It's a, it's a private liberal school. arts school, right? Good, good. Yeah. They have their own fucking agenda. Whatever. I don't Bard's, like my college either. So Bar we're on Bard the same is, page. Bard is complete garbage. And I wouldn't recommend any, anyone. Anyone, goes to purchase. anyone with a degree from Bard that isn't in STEM or their music department. The music department's good. Or photo. Anyone who else has like a degree in like and studies whatever. Like you fucking wasted your money. But I mean, did like someone you knew go there? Did you have some family in the area? No, I had did no you one. see something exactly. on the internet? No, no, no. My it favorite was exactly musician the went there. No, no, no. I wanted to get the fucking furthest away from home as I possibly. And could. you went on the map and you and threw I was a like, dart. Boom! And upstate New York. I'm in fucking Winterland now. And uh, yeah, so that's that's how I afforded going to that school for four years. And like, I didn't do any fucking work. I just smoked a bunch what of. What you major in? Philosophy. Interesting. And I, didn't, uh, I didn't read you know a single what? book. And that makes a lot of sense. I feel like you should put philosophy major in your Instagram and Twitter bios because nah, it would man. really make things a lot easier. That's for the, that's the one thing I don't practice. have. That's the one thing that I really hate is like, there's this factor that all these like underground musicians have that I just don't. 
where it's like what's that like peep had this like mystique and like bones has this mystique and like x has this mystique and i'm just like this fucking guy you know what i mean like i feel like joe schmo like relative to you know all what's the funny legends, you know what I is mean? i was talking to a mutual friend of ours which i don't even know if you know that we have mutual friends i was talking to a mutual friend and i watched the video with nine tails and garden and i was like i fuck with this but like they're drinking Coronas. Someone has a tall boy of Bud Light. Convolk looks like he was in a frat. Like, what is happening here? <laughs> I'm the, so I, were I you in a frat like, at Bard? Bard doesn't have frats. <laughs> uh, and no, no. I just like, I, I like, I still, if I could, my heart condition prevents me from doing it, but I've always enjoyed lifting weights. Not on some like masculine ego trip shit, but just like. Dude, help me like out. I've weights. been trying to hit the gym. I fucking saw myself in the other podcast, the fuck it podcast. I was like, I need to lose some weight. I need to start I feel you, lifting. Man. I got some hella weights. fat after I got this hard thing. And like I was anyway, but you know, it's uh the gym's the gym, man. Like if you if you fuck with working out, like you fuck with working out. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Like there's no other you have to find ways to make it enjoyable. Like I personally like like for me, it's like a personal battle of like, it's you versus the weight in front of you. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people don't frame it that way or don't want to frame it that way or whatever. So like, I don't know. I think that sports are a great way to keep in shape. Like if you, if you like socializing or like being around other people, like sports are a great way to stay in shape or like, even Did you though, play sports. I play, I was on the rugby team in, wow. in college, you know, but like, I was not good. I, I was I've terrible. I've seen some photos of you playing rugby. Is that yeah, I was, I was a swole boy. There, there's a, there's a photo of me like standing like, looking mad yoked like this is like pre-tattoo like i i've been making music for like three months and shit i i don't fit the stereotype of like you know some like scrawny kid in his room making shit right. but i i fit the same like mental stereotype if that makes sense where it's just like you have all those you know internal demons that you have to deal with when whatever form they make. well also maintain. just to touch back on what you said about peep and x i feel like when the underground was more actually underground and it was kind of an answer to the industry and it was its own thing away from the industry, there was more time to kind of build on it. But now that it's kind of the same thing and the underground is more of a yeah, the more industry, of a thing. It's like the industry's really in, like ingrained it, right. in the underground now. So yeah. it's like you're almost on the platform from when you start and it's harder to kind of build a mystique, I think. I mean, some people still do it, but potentially i just think it's like i don't want to be something i'm not like initially when i started so we're eventually going to get into the questions of influences right let's just get into it now well wait hold on okay. hold on all let right, me drive right, this right. interview all right whoa okay i'm sorry we glossed over i wasn't over, trying to step on any toes man My we bad. glossed over a big thing what did we gloss you're over? spending summers in russia yeah i'm spending summers so you, in russia. you're fluent in russian uh, yeah, I'm fluent. So, Russia. what were you doing in Russia for the whole summer? So, my dad uh, would go there and he would just finesse bitches, bro. I swear oh, to wait, God. Wait, it was just you and your dad? Yeah, it was literally my dad oh. was just like, my dad would tell my mom, like, yo, I'm trying to culture my kid in my own culture. And she would be like, she would relent and just be like, I'd right, fuck it, like, take him. And because I was a little demon child. And my dad was very like, he would beat the shit out of me. So like I was much on, I was like, I was on better behavior with my dad. Cause like, otherwise you just get the hands, you know, like you get the belt, like you get the fucking, the knuckle, like, whatever. And, uh, my, not making my, light. Yeah, of, know, I'm not why, making light of like, child abuse. At no, no, no. no. I, it's cause I tell it funny. Cause I don't, I don't yeah, hold a right. grudge against him. It's you just like, got the knuckle. he's a, he's a 78 year old, right. Plus he's 78 like year old Russian old, man. So it's hard to... he, my granddad was like shooting motherfuckers in the face when he was 15 right? he was a he was in the russian revolution he was like anti-fascist like we're gonna take these fuckers no, he was a, he, he was a he was a communist uh right 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 right, right, right. like and, right. He, and, he, and right. he fought a, he was like we were we were jews or i mean i wasn't there you know what i mean but like the fam our fam my family's jewish my my dad's family's jewish what's your last name are you allowed to say it no? yeah my last name is uh konevsky so what that means is allegedly knife jew so konev is the precursor to knife like konev kanif knife but why don't, don't you have know. a little knife with the fucking uh, Tw 21 savage, jewish star 21 savage did that for the from, thing 21 savage did that and he's from london anyway he might he might somehow be jewish I yeah, don't know. Right. london london and uh israel are close i don't know what the fuck i'm talking but, about so anyway so anyway my my, my dad comes from a whole Russia different culture like, and so like beating my ass was fine anyway yeah so i would spend time in in russia with my dad and like 
that was a that was a trip it's a whole different fucking did like you have summer friends there yeah dude i had i had in novosibirsk i had a friend named ira i had a friend boris i know it's stereotypical ass russian names boris yeah and then i had a bunch more that i don't remember those are the two that stuck out like ira was like my first like crush i was like seven i was just like in love with this girl she was like eight She's like, I'm too old for you. Oh it's hilarious. Yes. And then, um, and then Boris was like, he and I got in a fight with like a 15 year old when we were like eight. And like, he was like beating us with a stick. And then we both just like bum rushed him and like beat his ass. You should be surprised. Eight year olds have like a lot more power than you. Especially eight year old Russians. Russians. Yeah. He was, he wasn't even that big, but like Russians just like, they're, they're, there's something different, man. You know what I mean? Like, I guess we, but I'm American. So it's like, I can't. I can't I mean, fully claim Russian status. What yeah. do you think of the current state of Russia, though? I mean, in what sense? Like, in terms of like politically, or the government, or I don't know. I don't know shit about none of that, man. Yeah. I, all I know is that Russia is just like a completely different place, like culturally, from the U.S. I think that people are very. It's just like Russia has always kind of Russia and America are like two sides of the same coin like the way i see it like the people well everyone everywhere wants the same goal like nobody most people want the same goal where it's like people want peace like people want to you know have families and like live in relative harmony and like have easier lives and whatever pursue their dreams uh it's just like the way that things are done in russia is just different and it's not something that's explainable on the surface hmm. you know like it's not something I, like if i were i could write an essay about right. it, you know, but i couldn't i couldn't tell you in like a you gotta like, like a lecture podcast. a college class yeah, this and isn't that, a i cannot imagine th- anything more boring to like a 12 year old fan who's like i guess when i hear him talk about his stupid face tattoos you know what i so, mean so oh convo <laughs> what's your favorite subway sandwich yeah dude uh i fuck subway bro i don't fuck with subway bro same Subway's never trash. never endorse me fuck, subway dude fuck subway fuck jared Fuck, dude, fuck Jared, bro. For real. Fuck Jared, you canceled, bro. You should send him to Russia, see what happens to him over there. Ooh, I mean, he I don't, just, I don't think know, he's having a good time in prison, you know? No. Probably but, not. Oh, man. That's a whole different fucking I think discussion. this is easily the longest we've ever gone on the podcast without actually getting into the music yet. Have yeah. you ever thought about writing a book? Uh, I I don't know, man. I'm I'm considering, like... Do trying to do like stand up and shit, and like I want to do like Twitch streaming and shit. Oh, like yeah, I want to, I want to sure. diversify. Like, like I said, I'm an entertainer, and like I really enjoy making music. But it's like I just don't. I'm just. I don't feel like I can convey the entirety of my personality through music unless I'm going to make like more like you know satirical joke songs, and mm. I don't really want to do that. You know, it just doesn't appeal to me. So I've been thinking about like I don't know streaming fucking League of Legends or like Melee or some shit just just for fun just for the fans like yeah mad dude mad like rappers stream shit nowadays like it's, like, like it's a whole different culture now a lot of your fans wanted to know who you play on in League Melee. of Legends and Melee uh, I don't know Le- anything about video games all so. good in Melee I play I main Falco he's Shout like out Falco. he's fucking sick he's so tight uh, he's so easy dude he carries me he's such a fucking easy character and then um. And I'm not good at melee. I'm fucking garbage. Uh, and I'm also garbage at league. Uh, gold four. If any challenger players want to carry me, um, <laughs> challenger. But yeah, I uh, I play I play fucking anything in in League of Legends. I main like support top line. I, I just play tanks. I just play tanks because I like my mentality. Is just like just go in, dude. Just fucking just go in. And that's what tanks do in that game. Like, okay. They just they go into huge fights and they absorb damage. And then they walk away like, fuck you. And we killed like three of your guys. That's how it is. Sounds really Russian of you. Yeah, dude. (laughs) So, you know, let's get into it. All right, let's do it. Back when you were a little shithead in middle school, Mm -hmm. for good reason, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what kind of music were you into? Fucking everything, bro. Like, oof. Uh, I really was a fan of OG. Like, the first music that I got into that, I mean, just like, just from from the jump, like, I really fucked with green day initially that was like the first exposure i ever had to like music in general really was green day because they're how. they're like bay area yeah they're bay area and they were also just popping in like 2001 and shit you know and yeah. it's like when i i was like, like five so that's when i world. started being conscious about like music wow and um from then it was like i fucked with lincoln park really heavily or like eminem's like edgy actually good stuff you know when he was on drugs and i don't know man his his recent stuff is just like odd to me 
uh, it, it just doesn't resonate with me. And I'm not trying to diss I think Eminem. most people would agree with you. I yeah, think, it's not I about think, like, people like agreeing. Eminem might like, agree with you. It's just like, you can't, you're not, he's just not the same person, you know what I mean? And it's like, he used to be like public enemy number one. Like people forget right. this shit. Like Eminem was the most hated rapper in america Eminem, like tabloids were marilyn running. manson dude yeah exactly why are you i actually never children? got into why are you influencing yeah, exactly things? i never got into marilyn super heavy as a kid i got into him way later but as a kid like eminem i would see like what well, he's a devil worshiper and it's like weird because i'm like promoting I'm a, homosexuality somehow and because that, that's before like homosexuality was remotely cool in america you know what i mean was, like now it's you're a still gonna get married yeah right? you not only could you not get married but like being anti-gay was the most popular like that was like more prevalent within the population right you know what i mean and so yeah it was just it was just weird and i don't i don't know like yeah eminem was like the most hated dude in america like there were news stories running about how big of a piece of shit he was and stuff and then for him to turn from like that into like this dude that is making just I don't know stuff that just doesn't hit that same kind of well for edginess. like his own it's just like a different thing now for like his own mental health and personal well being. I would hope that yeah. a forty five year old yeah, Eminem yeah. who's I mean, the he father has, of a dude, grown he has, he has yeah he has child children isn't the same as his he has, I think he has multiple children right not really? just not just Haley right huh? like, I have no idea I don't know. I'm not up on my Eminem yeah I don't gossip. I don't I don't creep on celebrities like that but I, I anyway I was a big fan of I mean I'm still a big fan of old Eminem man like yeah. the songs are still there for you to yeah. listen to them. Uh, Dr. Dre's The Chronic, the first one, not the second one. The first one is the best rap album, like, not of all time, but uh, of all time. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want to say, like, this is the best rap album of all time, but for me personally, man, like, The Chronic, just like, I could literally listen to that on loop forever and sing it back to you. Wow. Um, and I got into that. And what else? Just like every, and then it was just like basically every 90s rock band, like Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Nirvana fucking everybody right like allison chain smashing pumpkins you, i can go infinitely and then like a lot of 2000s rap i was i was into but then like i would just listen to the same shit and my foray my first foray into like i guess modern rap was i, I fucking found young leans hurt on the internet i feel like that's a big jump from eminem in 2001 or something but i was just listening to like the same i was listening to like the same kind of shit like i wasn't like discovering new music that works when you're young yeah i wasn't discovering new music that much and then i was like a uh i think a senior maybe in high school and i just started like smoking weed a lot and whatever and i found young lean and i was like this guy is transcendental what was the first song you heard hurt and what so senior year what year is that so that was so 2013 2014 so like 2013 just so we can calibrate the underground that's like that's the start of the current maybe 2012 whenever the fuck hurt came out i think maybe 2012 i i I don't know when it came out but like when it came out i was on that shit when it had like less than a million plays on youtube and and it blew up pretty quick like and then it like stagnated and now it still like grows occasionally but it's uh just in terms of numbers i mean but I saw that and then I just got so deep into Young Lean and I was just like, I don't know what it was about him, but it was just the fact that like, it, it was like avant-garde rap. It was mm-hmm. every every trend in rap that it had existed for the past 10 years was like thrown out the window. And to me, for some reason, like not even as like the biggest rap fan in the world, like I was a fan of like lyrical rap, right? Like Eminem's pretty lyrical, like Dr. Dre's pretty lyrical. right? And then Young Lean, I was just like, this fucking, this is amazing. Like this is, this is mind blowing. And so, you know, like Oreo milkshake was like on like fucking repeat on my phone and like ginseng strip. Obviously, do you think it spoke to you a little bit more personally because you you have you live some of your life in Russia and then there's this kid from Sweden rapping in the no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think so. I think that it's just like, I mean, it, he was it was a meme initially, but then like it's just the same thing with like Old Town Road, right? Where it's like it's a meme or whatever, but like underneath the meme you want to listen to it and you would enjoy it without it being a meme. Had you had you not discovered listen, it through... there's some politics that go into Old Town Road, but I'm confident and comfortable in saying that song is fucking a banger. No, it's And amazing. I've listened to it maybe, seriously, I would say like 128 no, times. No, that's what I'm saying is like, with like meme songs or like Ugly God's Water or like right. whatever the fuck, yeah, they're memes or whatever, but that's what I'm, that's my whole point is like underneath that, you still right. fucking listen to it. You know what I mean? And you're like, this is great. 
And then you realize it's not even a meme. You know, like to me, it's not a meme. Like this actually resonates with me. Why? I mean, I'm a huge Young Lean fan. And that's what I'm saying. I like, like told you off camera that I threw his first Los Angeles concert right. from Escrow like in 2013. Mm-hmm. But man, I was sweeped right up in that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, Young Lean. And then from Young Lean, I was just like, that like was my foray into like Vaporwave. Like that was the thing, right? And then Vaporwave got me into like Bones. Then from Bones, I pivoted to like Xavier Wolf, to Chris Travis's like Crunch Time on YouTube, and I was just like, "What the fuck?" Like my mind was just started just expanding. The, I turned into ladder. Big Brain. I turned into Big Brain Alex. You know, like I was just like, "What the fuck?" I can't handle all this shit. And then I got into like fucking Puya's. God, he had a song that was like, um, "Was it Get Buck?" No, was it was it before Shake Get Buck. It was before that. It was, uh, or maybe it was after that. But it was, it was the one where it's like. You know, they say I wouldn't hit them with the lyrical, hit you with the something. To the, I don't know, but it was like whatever. It was like him and a bunch of friends, and then like he jumps into like water and he's shirtless, and it's like it's like I think it's pre Get Buck. Mm, I forget what it's called. And then I listened to like his albums, and like I just got into all that underground stuff. And then yeah, and then I would get like what the one person that like really obviously resonated with me and that I'm a very big fan of uh, was was Bones, and his shit just like stuck with me and i was like wait so like who is this guy you know i did my research and he's just like this internet dude and i realized like you know young lean bones like all these other like legends they just did this shit they you know what i mean like they Mm -hmm. didn't ask permission they didn't try to like finesse a label they just fucking got like a ten dollar mic not a ten dollar mic but you know what i I mean mean. They, they got they got like fucking usb mics right or whatever not the highest quality material we're in their fucking bedrooms, basements, wherever, friends' houses, wherever, and just made shit. And they were just making shit to make shit. You know, they weren't making shit because, like, they wanted to be popping on Instagram. They were making shit to make shit. And I had been feeling up to that point, like, so drifted in my life, right? With, like, my mom dying, having a terrible relationship with my dad, having, like, nothing stable, getting kicked from school to school, like, nothing fucking making sense in my life. And I was like, and I was never good at anything. Like, I was always good at, like, bullshitting and talking. I'm very, like, articulate, I'd mm. say. I'm pretty, like, self-aware and all, all that, that shit. shit. But um, is that staticky shit? Is that, like, going to be recorded? No. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. All right. Okay. Uh, and then, like, I was like, why don't I just try making some, some, some music? You know, like, why the fuck not? Like, because this, this you found fun. a home in the underground. Yeah. I was just like, I fucking... It's like that meme. <laughs> it's like that fucking hilarious meme where it's like that that nerdy kid who's like eight on the internet, like watching a Bones video, and he's like, "This is me." You know that? <laughs> that was fucking me. I was that little fucking kid who thought that they were like, right. "Oh man, I connect with these guys," and I did connect with them, but like, I obviously wasn't them, and that's I think made it so pretty apparent through my music um, that I'm I'm not remotely like similar to Bones or whatever. Because so, who would you say is your more direct influence on your music? Direct. Um, I genuinely I couldn't tell you, man. I would say it's like the the '90s bands that I listen to, like Blink One Eighty Two. I think maybe right. like is a a I don't not even Blink Nah, man. Some Forty One, maybe. Maybe I don't know. I I genuinely I'm influenced by so many different people and bands and groups and whatever that like they're all kind of i'm like an amalgamation of like everything or you know like yeah i'm like an amalgamation of like basically everything and i i don't mean to say like you know i'm just as much influenced by like tyler the creator as i am by like smashing pumpkins and i'm not trying to equate artists to whatever you know what i mean but like i've listened to so much different music and all of it, any music that I enjoy, I'm like, damn, I want to be like these guys. Like, I listen to, like, Gorilla's album, like, damn, I want to be like the Gorillas. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, I want to be like Radiohead. Only recently have I been like, damn, I want to be like me and try to make right. my own, like, really unique sound. But that's obviously easier said than done. So um, at what point, you're at Bard when you start recording? Yeah, I was a, I was a sophomore. And i just been, like, going through it. I just, like, hit, my girlfriend at the time had just, like, dumped me. Because, again, I was, like, just a dick. And I mean, she was also not the, whatever. I'm not going to talk shit on her. She's a good person, but like, it, yeah, it was like, uh, it was just really rough for me. Like I went through a lot of shit and I had no one to talk to because I would, like I said, I would always push people away. 
So then I would put all that emotional shit into the music, like all the, all the things that I couldn't tell even my closest friends, you know, like I wouldn't be open with them. I like, I didn't have a relationship with my, my parents, obviously, you know what I mean? Like I didn't have anybody. And then I was like, I guess I have myself, I guess I have these songs. So mm. that's what I did. Wow. Yeah. So were you writing before you recorded or what was that process? Like? No, I would just, I was going on like YouTube and just like looking up, I, I wasn't even looking up type beats. I was just looking up like rap beats mm. and then I would look up underground rap beats. And I found this producer uh, who I don't think is particularly active anymore, but back okay. then he was this dude called Sway Jin. S-U-I-J-I-N with like a little Japanese thing for water after his name. Mm. And I used one of those beats and, you know, I made a song called Mafia Man that you can't find anymore. And it was like, it was just like trash. It was garbage. But it got like a thousand plays in like a month. And I was like, wait, wow, that's like, that's fucking nuts. Like, you know, I had a thousand people, which it actually isn't, but like Where, 30 people or whatever. No, I put it on SoundCloud. I didn't wow. even know you could put music on like YouTube like that, like to begin with, you know. Um, or I mean, I knew it, but I that wasn't like the conscious. I still don't like upload music to YouTube. I only upload like music videos. Yeah, you don't have a YouTube channel, right? No, I do have a YouTube channel, but I, I don't. I only upload music videos. I don't upload like static mm. audio. You know what I mean? It's just never been a thing I've done. Maybe but I'll so you see that first thousand views, you're like, and oh, I was just wait. like, wait, like that means that somebody out there enjoys something that I've created. And like for the first time in my life, literally I did something that had an, like a positive effect on somebody, Wow, you know? Cause like I, I would always, like I said, I was just this ball of negativity. Like the only other person I'd ever done anything like good for was my mom. You know, like I would try to take care of her like to the best of my ability. And like, you know, I loved her to death and like, I would try to be the best son I could. And even then when she was like going through cancer, I wasn't the best. Like, I tried, but I still couldn't be, you know, everything that she needed me to be. You know, I couldn't be, like, this magic savior I mean, out of you nowhere. you were very young. I was young. It's not, I don't think it's, like, yeah, I'm not trying to, like, you know, rehash that whole story. But it's, yeah, and then, like, I noticed, like, hey, man, like, maybe instead of being so negative to everybody all the time and just, like, just being this dick, like, you can make this music and channel all that negativity into something that actually is positive. And that's where it all took off, you know? Um, and then after I started making music, like, uh, it just started growing. I started making beats too, and they weren't good. I so, have like a few beats that people use that are so deep in the trenches. But you said that you've never, like, you didn't tap into an image. You're just yourself. So yeah. when you're making those first songs, like, how'd you come up with the name? Like, what were those steps like? So here, I, I finally, you get the, you get the first public explanation of my name. Thank um, you. Um, so my first name, rap name, was Volk. What that means is wolf in Russian. Volk. The word mm -hmm. Volk is wolf. The issue with that that someone noticed on the internet was like, Volk also meant the people during Nazi Germany. And I was like, <laughs> even though I'm Jewish and I could easily just be like, that doesn't, what the fuck? You know what I mean? I wasn't going to take the risk and like, we live in such a time where how everything's long, so politicized. Like, how I long was that? No, it. but I mean, like, how long was the process of you using that name to use to someone figuring that out? No, like two or three months. Oh, and then okay. someone's just like, you know, Volk means the people in German, and that, and it still means the people in German, like, right? Volk. But it was just right. Used but like, by... but like Hitler's people would be like Volksreich or whatever the fucking word was, right? No, I mean, I'm just saying, right? No, like, right. I'm not, I'm not trying to like make this like a. This video is gonna get flagged on YouTube. Oh, that... <laughs> <laughs> and just like god for, damn it this i just rapper, got demonetized yeah, sorry dude i'll uh i'll try to recoup that <laughs> that my bad but no but like in actuality i was just like you know i don't want to take a risk with anyone thinking like that this is some sort of like weird nazi shit smart move and so i was like all right what the fuck do i name this now and i was just like all right i'll just like add uh a, i just added a spanish prefix con like with mm -hmm. so now it's with wolf and then that's like convolk and i think it it's so unique like like if you see com like here was my logic like if you saw convolk like convolk song title right you're gonna click that like who the fuck names himself convolk bro it's like what the fuck kind of name is that you, you know, know what i mean we're on the same page yeah who the hell names a rap website mascarilla no exactly it makes no sense it just makes you want to click that shit you know what right. i'm saying like it's the same thing with like anyone with like a crazy ass like you know 
I've been listening to a uh, hundred Gex recently. <laughs> Shout out Dylan Brady. I have a session with him on Monday. Ooh. He doesn't even know who I am yet. Uh, but anyway, he a uh, hundred Gex. Like you're gonna, you see a hundred Gex. You're like Gex. What? What? <clears throat> Click. You know. And then that's it, right? And th- that was the idea with Convoc was like, you know, it's it's still true to the original. Like this is like Wolf. Like I'm like mm-hmm. the the Wolf, the Lone Wolf. Hence the the hand tat, the album cover, the whatever, the song. You know, but that's that's basically what uh, what Convoke means. That's where the name came from, and then that just stuck from that point, and I I kept it. And yeah, man, it was just like a slow growth, and like I slowly started developing my own sound. This is like 2016, 20, 2017, no, probably. 20, 2017. Yeah, I've only been making music for slightly over two years. And you just recently graduated? Yeah, I graduated from college. Like somehow, bro. Like I said, never read a fucking when book. like last year. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah, so. You know, so when do the tattoos come into play? What do you mean? Like when did I get the tattoos? Like you're rapping, you're a junior, senior in college. When I realized that, well, I always like kind of had this fan. My mom told me there's two things you should never do. Three things you should never do. One is you should never have premarital sex. She was like a really Christian, like old school. Sorry, mom. The other was you should never, ever smoke cigarettes. Smart. Sorry, mom. Oh, and the third was never, ever get tattoos. <laughs> Sorry, mom. You know, so I, I always had this like fixation with like doing shit that was like prohibited to me, like I said, by being a bad kid. But right. I got my my first tattoo is like this one on my, it's like a these four dots that were stick and poked into my collarbone. It actually didn't hurt at all. Uh, but it makes me feel like I'm tough because it's like a painful place. That's, like a, that's what people say. That's right? like a tribal yeah yeah I, I don't have any like beyond lone wolf on my hands i don't have any words i, I kind of just like images um i didn't know what the fuck to put on my fingers though when did you get the knuckle tats the knuckle tats are like <sighs> like december area it was around my birthday that might have been on my birthday is the face tat the most recent edition or no nah, face tats are very old actually. is there another face tat yeah i have like one uh, over it. The, this is the best i have i have that I, one literally looks like a shadow from your glasses. I'm a proud owner of the worst face tats in the game. Like, I take the fucking cake, dude. No one has shit on me in terms of like, bad face tats. What do those tats mean? They when did they a, happen? They don't mean a fucking thing. Dude. Those are also I, I, stick and poke? Here's what they like were. It. I saw so many face tattoos within like the rap community that I was like, these are so dumb. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something fucking dumber. <laughs> I just like fucking put lines on my face. And it's like, Anyone watching this right now is like, oh fuck! Like they're just like face palming, like that is fucking pathetic. But like, I don't know. That was like, I just think that they're silly. And I also realized, like I said, the, when I started really getting tattoos, that's when I was like, I want to do this music shit permanently. Mm. And it was slightly before I realized that I could do it and live off of it. You know what I mean? Like I got the tattoos like right before I realized, like, oh, I can also live off of this. So like, it was at first like the whole. You know how people will get face tattoos to be like, cool, I'm perfect. Like, I'm permanently unemployable. Right. Like, I, think, I gotta struggle now. I think, like, Uzi said that famously in an interview. Peep said that in an interview. Yeah. Right. That's I had the, like I a had line the, of thought. I had the same line of thought, but the thing is that I realized very quickly after that that it wouldn't be as big of a struggle as I thought. Because, like, I started, like, my shit went, like, exponential. Like, I hustled really hard for two years, and then I dropped Lone Wolf, and I dropped the video for I Fucked Up. And then everything just went like way the fuck up for me. So were you already supporting yourself for music Before when you graduated that, no. college? No, 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 no. So what happened? No, 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 when you graduated no, no. So college? I graduated college like this recent summer because oh, I, I, I took okay. like a I, okay. I graduated late. Like I I took like an extra like semester because I like fucked around another semester and like basically dropped out for a semester. It's a long story. I graduated like a year late, basically. Okay. But um, yeah, I I don't uh. What was the original question? So, I mean, after you graduate college, there is no, oh, I'm going to go get a job because money was already coming in for music. Well, yeah, I mean, because I graduated like fucking literally uh, less than a month ago, technically. Oh, but, a month But ago. a year ago, like, no, I wasn't making, I wasn't making any money before Lone Wolf dropped. Like, I was a broke ass piece of shit before Lone Wolf dropped. And then that album just like popped and like everyone liked it. I mean, not everyone. You know what I fucking Wait, mean. Wait, but like, so what are you doing now? You graduated school a month ago. Are you living on your own? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm, like I'm paying. Like so, I live with. 
I don't live with my dad. My dad lives with me. Mm, like I pay the wow. bills. So it's like, yeah, it's it's pretty like it's a weird responsibility Crazy. thing. Like it's a complete like switch of shit. Like the the power dynamic is like really odd. Like I just don't talk to him. I just stay in my room and like. Is your dad bills. also sick? He's he's seventy eight and he has like he has like heart issues and he's showing like signs of like you know early dementia and shit. So it's like wow. it would kind of be cruel for me to move out. If that makes sense. I mean, you're essentially I, taking I, care of him at this point. Kind of. Like, not not to, like, he's still, like, fully functioning on his own and yeah. stuff. But, like, I just kind of want to be there. And, like, I honestly want to, like, repair my relationship with him because it's so shit. And, like, you know, he's never been proud of me and he's still not. And, like, that's a big motivation for me is to, like, I really want to make, like, a fucking number one billboard hit and just, like, rake in some money and some, like, recognition and some, like, I don't know, accolades or whatever. Not to have any of that shit, but just to show my dad, like, hey, you didn't fucking raise a loser, you know what I mean? Like, you didn't raise a complete fucking failure. But that's my own, like, personal problem that I have to deal with, you know? So, I think my dad still, like, loves me, I hope. But, you know, it's, uh... Yeah, it's it's weird living with him, for sure. Like, we just we just don't talk. It's, like, a... It's odd, because, again, he's 78, and it's a whole generational shift like it's a completely different has generation. he ever heard your music or he's seen never, a video he, he doesn't or... know what my artist name is he's never heard oh, my wow. music and i i never want him to like it's i don't know i'm not because i'm not proud of it yet i haven't made anything that i'm like stoked on you know like i think i i fucked up and like lone wolf and that whole album mm. was pretty good and i think swan dive like there are a few songs out on that which are pretty good and like my most recent song which we can get into is like also pretty good right. but it's like, I want to make something that is just, like I said, like, mind-blowing, that, like, really changes shit. Like, that's, why else do it? Like, unless you want to be the best, why the fuck would you do it in the first well, place? Well, and you know? I think, I'm sure your fans who are watching this right now are, like, what do you mean? I yeah. love your music, and you've already established a sound, but taking a step back, it's clear that you and, like, everyone else in your, like, subset of the new underground scene is still very much finding their sound. For sure. As yeah. you should That's be. why we get so many comparisons. You're still so to young. Like You're all artists. like trying to find your own footing. Yeah, that's why we get so many fucking comparisons to other artists that we don't sound like, but like people, I don't know, people just like do like lowest con- common denominators right. in their brains and then are just like, oh, it's a melodic beat. Like it's, it's peep. Oh, it's like a quiet, like people fucking thought Night Lavelle was a Bones clone. And I'm just like, Crazy. losing my mind. Like, are you, are you actually inbred? Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And it's it, like dealing with that's obviously annoying. And that's also part of the motivation of wanting to really separate your sound. But at the end of the day, like how many people think that? And like, how much do I fucking care? Like, right. you know, I, I just want to make really, really good shit. I want to make shit that everybody can relate to and find some sort of comfort from. Cause that's what I was looking for in music. Like, that's why I think I gravitated towards music is because mm. like I had, I'm not saying I had like a hard life or like, I'm not like, what was me? You I mean, know you I mean? had a pretty. No, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say any of that shit, bro. There are a million people on like the fucking, my bad, on like the streets of fucking America that are homeless. Not a million. I don't know what the fucking number is. Oh, there are a lot of people I'm that are sure homeless. I'm sure there's a million. There's people in fucking public housing that can scrape in it. Like, there are mad people that have had worse lives than me. Like, I am blessed to fucking, like, I'm sitting here in this room. You know what I mean? Like, I have nothing to complain about. But, when I was a kid, I went through a lot of like, it, at least in my head, like it, it was rough for me, mm-hmm. like mentally. I know it's not rough relative to a lot of people, but for me, it was. I mean, you don't and have to like justify it against other people. I guess, I guess, but I just like it. Just feels like whatever. I won't get into all that. But long story short, that's what music was for me. It was like an escape, and I just want to be able to provide that escape for so many people because I know that like from people, like I said, who are you know, going through the worst of the worst, like with like terminal fucking illnesses mm. who, who I've had listen to my music and I've had people like, damn, there was this dude who was like, yo man, my friend, man, he had like, he was like 23 and like had brain cancer and he was your biggest fan. And like, you know, wow. he passed recently and he would have wanted wow. to like, and like, I just like teared up. I'm tearing up now just like, cause I read that message and I was just like, damn, I have it so good. Like I have this heart condition and my heart might be like, like I could die before I'm fucking thirty. Is maybe. the heart condition hereditary from your father? Is no, that also it's just what he has? it's just a random like fuck up. So what is it? It's a uh, it's post orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, uh, which if you look up, it's like non lethal. But I also have PVCs, PACs, and a potentiality of it turning into ventricular tachycardia. How'd you figure this out? 
a shit ton of medical bills that I still haven't paid off. Uh, if that makes sense, like no, going yeah, through a bunch right, of medical right. tests, going to the hospital a bunch. Like when I would felt my heart. Are you just supposed like to be playing rugby with that? Fuck condition? no, dude. I shouldn't have been smoking weed. I shouldn't have been like fucking lining coke and Adderall. Like I did a lot of drugs like before I knew I had this thing. Wow. And now I'm like, I'm not sober. Like I'll still drink a beer once in a while, or like I'll still take a clonopin before I go on stage to not feel really anxious. Cause, but I don't do drugs for like fun anymore. Hmm. Like I will, I should have done. A clonopin before this interview because like everyone watching this knows i've been shaking for the fucking past 20 yeah, minutes you were like playing with the bottle cap yeah i was like twitching and shit yeah. now i'm kind of calm but yeah man like i i don't take that shit for fun you know what i mean and i don't i try to stay like as unaffected by like i try to not overwork myself and any of that shit because i'm very afraid of my my heart like imploding on me for sure but is I was there, just saying, like, so. But I mean, like, is there medication for that? Or are you yeah, doing anything there's, like there's medications. The... There's medications, but like, it's still the issue is that I haven't gotten like a perfect, definitive diagnosis. Like, I mm. haven't run every test, and that's like part of my kind of my hypochondria is like, I want to run every test to make sure, like, I want to nail like exactly what is wrong with my body. You Do you have I mean? insurance? No, I don't. That's the issue. Dude, just sign up for insurance. Yeah, yeah the sign up period is November. No. Kids, the sign up no, period for insurance is November. I mean, not through Obamacare. Like you can just purchase a like I purchased a insurance plan. Right. We'll I mean, have like, this talk off camera. We can have later. this talk off camera. I'm yeah. gonna I, help you sign up. I, for I, I've like called insurance agents and they were like, No, you missed the period and shit. Maybe I was misinformed by these people, but like actually may is it for every shit, man? Because California because California shit is different. Like I, I don't know. Medi-Cal. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah. We'll, no one will fucking yeah, care no about insurance. No but back to the original topic is like basically I went through shit as a kid. That's what makes me feel like I have this necessity in my life like my life is like now tribute to make sure that other people don't go through like that same shit or like have an escape because i can't prevent bad shit from happening but i can kind of ameliorate the effects of it in people's mentals by making the best music that i possibly can that people can use as kind of like refuge and i know that that sounds maybe pompous or something but like i unironically believe that like i can i can be one of the fucking like legends of the game so to speak but you have to be able to I don't know, mentally like affect like the world or like, I don't know how to explain it in, in fucking words, but it's like, I need to make the best fucking music possible and brainstorm on like, how exactly do I get this under everyone's noses? Cause something that I have noticed with my music is that like, as soon as people are exposed to it, the majority of people fuck with it. But how do you get like people to get exposed to it? Right. Is like the question. And I don't want to do it through some like inorganic means of like, right you know, paying this person to post it on here and whatever, you know, it's like, which I did like back in the day, like I would pay Ned Arb like $10 for a two day repost, you know what Shout I mean? Shout out Ned. Shout he's out put Ned. on a lot of, Ned, he's put on a Ned lot of rappers. Fucking does not like me, but he doesn't yeah. like you. I, I don't think so. I think a lot of people don't like me who just like, don't care. You know what I mean? I always interpret people not caring as dislike. Like I thought you didn't fuck with me, but it was really just like, right, why would you respond to some question. random DM? Is there, if Ned doesn't like you, is there a reason why I shouldn't like you as well? No, no, no. Okay, I'm okay. just, I, I was definitely, when I started out, I was mad annoying. Did I was I, mad annoying in DMs. No, did like, I not respond to your messages? Because we've had no, great no, no. conversations and messages before. Yeah, yeah. But like, but there, more, but there, more there was like a solid like six months where I was like, damn, I fuck with Mascarilla. And I would like, I'd, I like, would like your stuff. And like, I followed you on everything. And like, I hit you up on something and I would just get no response. And I was like, here's the thing curved again, man. But you, it's so oversaturated but, right now that you get that all the time that but you vet. Here's here what too. happens. A lot of the time I'm watching, but I'm not telling people I'm watching. Yeah. Yeah, that's something I've learned. So many people have like have no idea like, oh, dude, like I've been fucking watching for the past whatever, you know, and it is what it is. I get why <laughs> an upcoming artist wouldn't see that, but. I doubt Ned has a problem with you. Yeah, he, I mean, like I said, like, you know, shout out Ned, shout out all of GBC. I definitely, whenever I met because them in person. Because you worked with Fishnark, who's a member I, I, of GBC. I've, I, I've worked with Fishnark, uh, yeah, once. We had, a, we had a really, really enjoyable studio session together. Dude is, like, unbelievably sweet. Like, one of the sweetest people I've met. And, you know, I've met, like, Coldheart, Wicca Phase, 
everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone besides, like, I guess, MacNet, I guess. And um, they, they've all been, like, really nice to me, really good people. But the thing is that, like, when I'm at the period of time in my life where I met them, I was just fanboying. Like, I would just be like, yo, I'm such right. a big fan of your so- stuff, like, blah, blah, blah. And at that point, I didn't have any of, like, the numbers that I have that kind of, like, I know that numbers don't matter, but, like, I didn't have any of the kind of mm, social approval or whatever where they're just, like, this is just another one of those dudes that always, like, is, like, bombarding my DMs type right. of thing. Like, that's the mental. And I don't blame them because I have the same shit where it's, like, there are kids that will DM me every day and say, like, random shit to a point where it's, like, I, I kind of don't want to respond because it's like, it's, like, a little weird or it's a little annoying. And then some of them, like, end up getting you know like their own sizable audience yeah. i'm talking about kids who specifically do music right you know and it's like i don't yeah like so i i, I so understand the mentality you as starting as a fan of the underground scene yeah and then being a participant and now being an active figure in the right. underground scene how do you deal with the politics I, I just don't. I don't anymore. I tweet. I, I got in trouble for a uh, for a. Uh, I tried to make a funny tweet and it, people didn't interpret it as funny. Uh, that if you know, you know. If you don't, it doesn't matter. No, well, I don't mean politics in terms of like political. Oh, well, why use the term politics, my guy? How do you deal with the uh, oh the scene interactions politics. of yeah the scene politics? I, I should have clarified. I'm gonna I'm still address what I said before now. Just like my bad, it was a stupid tweet. It was trying to be funny. Any anyone, no one. There were like three people mad at me, and I just like caved. Anyway, that was really hashed out on the timeline. Yeah, anyway. I was. I just like clarified, like this is just a meme, guys. Like relax. Uh, and and you are a self identified meme lord. Uh, I I guess a lot of my fans are uh, are. I don't. Please don't ever say I'm a self identified meme lord, dude. That just like discredits <laughs> you immediately. A lot of my fans are like mad, like. 4chan-esque type like kids we asked your fans for some questions for this yeah interview. dude all the fucking questions are like oh fuck man like just like the dumbest shit yeah. but that's intentionally dumb like they're right, just clowning right. you know it was funny and I, I i like that shit like i i have the kind of like some of the weirdest fans in the world and i wouldn't trade them for a fucking thing they're the best fucking like because the thing is at the end of the day man is like all that weirdness or whatever man like they still they ride to the death for me like I have like manic fans, you know. I what mean, I'm the weirder the fans, the better. I don't like, dude. I don't. They send me some of the weirdest stuff and like <laughs> whatever, man. I I love these people to death. They like enable me to live and like pay for my like my future dad's like medical issues or my own or whatever, and enable me to live my dream and like pursue this goal of like being one of the biggest artists. Like, period. Wait, scene politics. Scene politics. Shout out to the fan. Because, okay, so... I, I don't fuck you with... You grew yeah. up causing shit for a good reason. Maybe right. there were better ways to challenge yeah, it, but that's what you chose. Yeah. And now, as an artist, it seems like you get yourself into some beefs, maybe imaginary, like we just discussed with Ned. I, I'm but, not, like, I never how do you get, deal with, I don't like, really get into, like, public... I've gotten to, like, maybe, like, one public beef that didn't end well for me. But that's a whole... That wasn't even in the underground. That was with, like, a, an industry individual. Um, but... Dude, I don't really beef, dude. I really tr- I try not to talk shit behind people's backs, bro. Anything that I say to you about someone theoretically, right? Which mm-hmm. I, I really don't. I would say to that person if, if they were there. Like that's that's kind of the code I live by because it's like I've been talked about behind my back so many times, mm-hmm. just on like on so many different levels, uh, like just even in like school and shit, right? Not even in the music shit, where it's just like that is one of my biggest like I hate that shit so much. So I make sure to never, like, I like I just I don't get involved with like politics and shit. Like I I completely stay out of like the, the scene politics. You know, like, and if someone has an issue with like one of my friends or whatever, like I try my best not to get involved because it's just like you lose way more than you gain. Generally, mm. you don't want to like. I mean, like I don't want to like call these people out, but. I won't call anyone out by name, but there are artists that have ruined their own careers by just taking beefs with people. Like every beef that like presents itself, you know what from I mean? From the underground? From everywhere, dude. Mm-hmm. From overground oh, to underground, right. you know what I mean? Overground, like, it, overground to underground, doesn't matter. <laughs> the overground overdogs.com. Yeah. No, no, no. What, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I have no idea. No, okay. That's, uh, that's, no, nah, I fuck with underground underdogs, but. Duh, I, that wasn't a dish. I'm oh, not well, I don't, yeah. I've just never heard the term overground before. 
Man, we're getting sidetracked. We're getting sidetracked. Basically, I don't, I don't like, I don't fuck with political beef. Like fucking, someone has a problem with someone, man. That's their issue, you know. If you don't like my shit, that's cool. I'm not gonna respond to you saying like people are like will be like, oh, you fucking. People got mad at me for working with Fishnark because they were like, GBC kill peep and shit. And I was like, dude, like, do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's so many things to provoke me. Right. Like, or like, you're a clone or like, you wish you were Juice World or like some just random shit. And I've learned to just be like, okay, cool. You know, just and like, don't, don't, you've don't take the bait. You found know? your own niche of the new wave coming up in the underground. I mean, how'd you meet some of those guys? How'd you meet? Oh, it's all internet. Shit, how'd man. you meet Garden? Uh, wait, who was the first person you named? I actually couldn't. Uh, Nine, Nine Tales. Tales. Yeah. Uh, so I met Garden online through a, another artist called Young Van. Uh, Young Van put Garden onto my music, and this is back when I was really small, like maybe a thousand followers on like SoundCloud, right? Like, which was a huge milestone to yeah, me, by the way. I bet. Uh, and Garden had like nine thousand. Like he was like, whoa. whoa. I can't imagine being that big, you know. And he reached out. I reached out to him, or he reached out to me, or something. And we just immediately, immediately like struck up a conversation, like a connection. And ever since then, man, like he's been literally one of my best homies. Like he's been like one of the only people that hasn't like given me any pause. Like I've never questioned like his authenticity. And he's just like he's always been for there, been there for me when I need shit. And I can't speak for him, but I, you know, I've tried to be there for him when he needs shit. Like, you know, and he's just like a really tight homie of mine. And then Nine Tails, um, kind of met like after, like, kind of like Garden and Nine Tails and like Gucci High Waters and all these like, and Shinigami and all these mm -hmm. dudes. Like, it was all this. I don't want to say it's the same scene because everyone had really different sounds and stuff, but like, there were like associations in the sense that, like everyone would always ask the other like work with this person, work with this person. And I would just like look these people up and be like, well, it's crazy, you know? And so, yeah, I, I don't really know exactly how Nine Tails and I met. I don't remember like specifics, but eventually we just like me, Garden, and Nine Tails, we started calling ourselves, I started calling us jokingly, like the Holy Trinity, you know what I mean? Like together, we can't be stopped, like type of shit. And then that's when we made whatever it takes. Like we linked up in the summer and got like an Airbnb together and we made whatever it takes. And that just like took off. And that's how I knew, like, this, like, the Holy Trinity shit wasn't just, like, a meme. It was, like, so, damn, we really, like, because that was, like, the biggest song any of us have ever right. had. And it key, could you know? still be the biggest song from your specific scene within the underground. Yeah, I mean, like, whatever it takes, bro, like, people send me videos of, like, whatever it takes being played at, like, like club parties wow. with, like, 2,000 people in it. Like, shit that should be playing rave music, and they'll play whatever it takes, and people are, like, start slow dancing. And I'm, like, damn, we did that, you know? Um, so what happened to Nine Tails? He, uh, I'm not sure how much I should speak on this, but Nine Tails was kind of sick of the association with like emo rap, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and he has he stopped making music as Nine Tails, and I mean, I think it's common knowledge, like what he makes music as now. He has an Instagram page. Yeah, he has an Instagram page, and he has a, a whole new different music channel. And I'm sure the people who don't know, if you just ask in the comments, someone will tell you. Again, I just he might get mad at me for saying it on like a thing, so I'm not. It's gonna very say what easily it is. searchable. It's very easily findable if you just like ask a question like, in the YouTube. Comments. I already knew, but I was just doing my yeah little research on you, and it popped up right away. Yeah, me and Nine Tails, like we like me and Garden are extremely tight. Me and Nine Tails just don't talk as much. Like I try to reach out to him as often as I can, but there's just like he he's kind of just kind of secluded himself, or maybe maybe not. But like you know, Garden's like yeah, he doesn't like really. We don't really talk that much either anymore and it's there's no beef like there's no issue there's no dislike at all but it's just like he he really i don't know like you know he's going through his own thing and i i kind of want to respect that and give him his space and whatnot but like i have nothing but love for the guy like he was an amazing person uh like when i met him in new york in person like and he's you know he makes amazing shit like he's extremely talented he's extremely diverse in music and like I wish him like, all the best. And I hope he like, you know, whenever he wants, he can reach out to me and I want him to know that he's probably never going to watch this, but you know, but Oh no, he's a big mascarilla fan. Yeah. He's a, he dude. he fucking, he, he lurks everywhere, man. Like he, he knows everything that goes on. I just think he like refrains from dealing with. So with the Holy Trinity broken up, was that kind of 
Do you think that was a momentum killer? You guys not at all. Have no. like but a it, big it, song. It, dep- it depressed the fuck out of me when I saw like you guys could have been doing a tour no, together. No, no, no. You we could have put out projects. We, no, no, no. It was never like I said. Holy Trinity was always a meme, kind of. Like we were never like the group chat was just called the Holy Trinity. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it was never intended to be like a band, or it was never intended to be like it wasn't intended to be anything really. You know what I mean? It was just like kind of a joke between us. But like beneath the joke was the truth that like three of us together just make cool ass shit and i think it could it could potentially happen again in the future it's just like it's really up to all of us you know what i mean like and it has to we all have to be on the same page and whatnot um but i don't think it was a momentum killer at all the only thing it killed was like it killed my mood for like fucking like two three weeks so just like damn bro like nine tails like quit making music as nine tails and at that time he didn't create that new profile uh, right and he we just were just like vanished. damn like he just yeah, and that's like my biggest fear is just like, you know, just like one day if I like if I were to wake up and like all my music has been deleted and no one ever like heard a song I've ever made, like that's like a that's a nightmare, you know what I mean? Like and for him to like actively just be like, yo, know, like, you know, I'm leaving my music up, whatever, but like I don't want to be Nine Tails anymore, basically. Like to me that was just so foreign because I I I can't relate to that at all. Hmm. Um but yeah, it was just really, it was just really sad for me, man. Because like he was such an influential dude, and like I knew that that project as Nine Tails would have gone really high. I think that right. his current projects, it's doing amazing, and yeah, it's going to continue right. doing well. Like I'm not saying like he'll never be Nine Tails, like not at all. It just seems like and that's the music, not even his goal the, anymore. Like I want to speak yeah, for him. It exactly. seems like he just wants to put his music out and not care about exactly, anything else. Exactly. Exactly. Like, and it's just like I realized, I guess at that point, that his and I goals from the jump were like very different. Like he he doesn't he wouldn't have cared if if whatever it takes like was a smash hit so to speak or not not that it was a fucking smash hit you know like these things are all relative within right. the underground right? right right you know he he never gave a shit about shit like that and like I'm not gonna front whatsoever like a big thing that's very important to me is creating and amassing like a large audience because like that's what I I kind of want to like just like I said give people that outlet you know give people that release give people that escape you know. And like a, the biggest scale that I possibly can, like affect the most lives that I can positively while I'm still here on Earth, because I probably don't have as much time as I'd like. I don't think anyone has as much time as they'd like, right? So it's like, you know. But his, I, I don't know exactly what his goals in music are. I think he just wants to make it. Like his his enjoyment is really in the like the Actually creation process. Music. Not, Not he doesn't want to hear anything back. Scene from politics. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, none of us really play scene politics like that. But. I don't think. Do you find it hard to be in this new crew that's coming up? And Fiji's mid, by the way. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my god! <laughs> Putting that out Shots there. Shots fired at the entire SoundCloud community. Uh, Fiji's only cool when Young Lean pours it on Switchblades or whatever, or whoever. No, that was Bones. Bones. Man, I'm stupid. Oh come on, man! They had to cancel me. Just yeah. cancel me. I don't you know my shit. Like, completely blew all your credibility. It's okay. We just won't release this. Oh goddamn it! But so you're coming up with these artists. Someone can be. Have the biggest song one month, then someone's song is in a TikTok, then he has all the clout, and then someone releases this. I, How's that play into things of like you all being a crew? And I don't give a shit, man. Like, do you I'm, ever think I'm okay, about? I'm okay with. Since, I want my homies to blow up and leave me behind because that gives me something to chase after. Does that make sense? Fire. Like, put my, that on a T-shirt. I yeah. I want my fucking homie. I want Garden to fucking make a, a radio hit and be fucking the next superstar, or whatever, so that I can always be like. I'm going to get you, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm going to do that same but thing, too. since we have kind of... The underground has been around long enough where crews have come and, and scenes within the underground have come and gone. Do mm-hmm. you ever find yourself looking back at what's happened in the past and being like, oh, I wonder who's going to be the one from our crew or, like, how it's all going to play out well, in five years from now? I don't know, man. I don't think that... Firstly, like, I don't, I don't have a crew. You know what I mean? Like... We're friends. Right. Like, that's the thing. Like we've never. There's no like. Right. It's right. not. It's not a team sesh. It's not a right. goth boy click. It's like me, Garden, Shinigami, Gucci. You know, Fatsy ninety three. Like you can continue right. naming names. Like uh, Savage Gasp. I, now I feel like I'm gonna fucking forget people. Ooh, and they're gonna you be left mad. out so and so. That's yeah, beef, exactly. Bro. It's like we're friends, but it's it's not like an explicit crew. Like mm-hmm. we're not all living together. We're not all doing stuff together. We're all friends. We all like each other differing degrees i guess like i don't know like so, some days like i feel like i piss people off and stuff but at the end of the day i know that they like these people have my back and they're good but like i said you know it's not a 
and I don't think any of us wanted to be like a collective. Like, yeah, right. maybe we could just like start making crazy views if we all work together or whatever. But I, I don't, I think that we each want to be like independent artists that are all associated with each other. And I also don't think that all of us have kind of fleshed out the idea in our head of like, well, we, I don't think we've even considered the idea of like all creating like a collective type of thing. And right, now, but now I mean, that you like, bring that up, I'm like, hmm. hmm but you know, but, no, but I, I don't think, I think I the don't majority mean of them that are sense. 100% I mean off, as, like, off for that. Right, but like as like a scene, more so. I think it's a good thing that you all have each other's support and you're all blown yeah, up like, together. Yeah, like I love these dudes, but it's like, yeah, definitely. I don't see it as like which one. I unironically believe that every single one of us has the potential to hit Billboard tier. I think that each one of us has different different aspects of us that are extremely marketable. All of our sounds are different enough to where it's like it's not like there's going to be one guy who perfects the sound. It's that right. we, it's like you know ten people with ten different sounds that while they might be like influenced by each other, like their similarities or whatever. Like I one hundred percent believe that you know each of these guys are going to make it like large. You know what I mean? Just like to what degree? I don't know, but. I, yeah, like I, I definitely don't think that I'm like this person's gonna, you know, like really set themselves apart. Like I've, I, I've genuinely never had that thought, and I'm the sort of person who like analyzes shit in that way. So, who do you think someone that you want to work with outside of this mini scene that you're involved in? Um, uh, do you mean like people who are also in the underground, but people I don't associate with, or do you mean like in general? Uh, let's do both. Okay. So first, people in the underground that you don't associate with. All any of the legends, dude. Like any, like working, being able to make something with like I don't know, Bones would be like a dream. Knight Lavelle, Young Lean, you know, any of the like active like legends w- would just be so crazy to me. Just because like I look up to them so much, but I think that I think a big issue actually is that so many of them are not willing to work. Like they don't see me as a peer. They see me as like some dude who's like emulating them unsuccessfully perhaps i don't you know i can't you know right. I, i'm not trying to impose my thoughts right, on them, but it's just right. like i have seen let's put it this way i've never seen any sort of embracing by like old legends not even in quotes like actual like like the old legends of like the new school of kids i haven't seen any like embracing of that and like and that's I'm not like that's, now. that's not shots fired that's not disrespect like and it's not like, oh, I'm salty that fucking people won't. I just, I just think it's like, perhaps they don't interpret it as being like in the same, you know, vein or like there's some lack of authenticity there. Like, I, I don't know. And maybe me saying this is making me look extremely whack. No, but I think it's, it's like, a good point. But I also think it's a, maybe a little over analytical. Perhaps. I, I definitely overthink shit, but it's yeah. like, here, here's the thing. It's like, I, I think you have to put it in their perspective. It's like, yeah, I'd love to work with Bones, but like, who wouldn't? Right. And what incentive would he have to work with me? What do I offer him that is different from like what anybody else could, right? And from his perspective, honestly, it's probably not much. So and it's for like, Bones specifically, he doesn't work with anyone outside of his own. Career yeah, of course, point. of course. He used to in like 2013, 14, right. do a ton of. There's like a Young Lean, uh, Corbin collabs, you know. But at this point, shout out Corbin. He's one of the legends I didn't didn't mention. Yeah, where is Corbin? Do you Spooky know where he Black is? slash Corbin, man. Um. I don't I don't know anything about where his whereabouts are. He's like one of the most mysterious dudes, but he Yeah, he's like actually the most mysterious. I I, dude. I think that he had like a similar thing with like the Nine Tails thing where it's like he didn't I don't think he wanted all that attention. Well he also came up in a really strange way that would not have worked if he did it about four years later. Or earlier, you know. Yeah, like he hit this sweet spot of like weird young lean avant garde thing, and then it. I don't. I don't want to even characterize him as that. I think. I think that he's like one of the best fucking R and B singers. He's an incredible singer. He's one of the best. He's like a real life good singer. Fucking yeah, his live performances, man. The scratchiness, like the gutturalness of his voice. Yeah, I definitely look up to him. I can't believe I didn't mention him, but okay, so it's just that he's so not present who, you know who outside like who are some what i mean let's talk green day collab <laughs> um well actually i wanted to stay inside and say <laughs> shout out to drain gang young lean fucking any of any of the swedish motherfuckers dude those guys are out of their mind good like you know like they're they're all insanely so good at like i would love to have blade dude, on here one day dude young young good and like young sherman white armor like echo 2k blade like obviously lean you know what i'm saying like tie boy like all these dudes just 
fucking crazy. But uh, outside, man, like, I don't know. Like I said, like, Gorillaz and Radiohead, I think, are, like, it's obviously never going to happen. But who knows? I mean, like, you know, here's the a, here's a one thing that I remind myself is, like, right now I'm at this, like, really small period of my, like, career thing. And I'm not going to be discouraged if I don't make it, like, overnight. Because a big thing that people look for is, like, people that like come up quick right like the young lean videos like once they got right. into the the virality thing like that popped off right like or like you know Lil Nas or like well, Juice like, World with for like example, his videos or whatever Denzel Curry he was he's opening up for Billie Eilish right now and the first thought I had when I saw a video of him performing for like 15,000 people and they're shouting his song right. I'm like wow this is insane right and then I search Masquerade on Twitter it's like oh yeah like I was covering him back in 2000 13 or 12 or Bro, something i remember i remember it's like been Ice seven Age. or eight remember mike years Deese, by the way mike my, you that's know, a whole different discussion he, uh i mean I i'm not i'm not i'm not saying anything he don't. might be canceled no i'm not i'm not canceling anybody but <laughs> i i think he just quit music but anyway dude ice age denzel but every, so every i mean so, so he's even been doing it for like eight yeah. years yeah and he's just opening up yeah. for and he's not even at the peak of his career you've been at he's it for what like three years not even like less, less than three years. Right. So, dude, you got some time. Well, here's here's it's a I, long journey. I always like to tell people about the uh, the the old adage of uh, Brian fucking Cranston, man, the dude from Breaking yes. Bad. For those who are uninitiated, yes. like beyond being the dad and Malcolm in the Middle or whatever, which I didn't know he was until I like looked up his Wikipedia page. Like he didn't really have any acclaimed shit, but he was an actor since he was a kid, you know. And then he only like really broke through and became this like you know legend. In his what forties or fifties when when right. he did that role, crazy. And so it's like, and he hustled his whole life without like, and he never gave up. You know what I'm saying? And like that type of shit where it's like people just like keep hustling. Or like Denzel Curry is a good example, but that's not you know that's not like a forty year career, right? I'm ready to fucking put in my forty years and like blow up when I'm fifty as like a jazz artist. I don't give a shit, Sick. but I just want to make sure that like at some point I hit that height. So that I can again be that outlet for people. I just want a bunch of people to be able to be like, "Yo, I relate to this. I like this, and it helps me get through my day." Because well, this, this world is like a fucking treacherous place for everyone, no matter how easy or hard, quote unquote, your life is. Like everyone has issues that they deal with, and like I just want to make sure to like alleviate those things for people. I mean, and with that being said, personally, I think your latest song release is your best song yet. Thank you. <laughs> I think you're really sliding into maybe finding your sound and developing it a little more. That the song you just put out, if, what's the name? Um, uh, it's kind of corny, I guess. Uh, anxiety exclamation point. Right. So anxiety exclamation point. It's just anxiety. I know. Fuck. <laughs> anxiety. That's that sounds the most natural, and. I, that's yeah. just your last song. I recorded that sitting in a chair in my bedroom, like holding a mic. So like I had to EQ out all the vibrations from my arm because I was like shaking. And I had just, I had been going through like a week full of just like the craziest panic attacks of my life. Like I couldn't walk outside without dissociating from reality and wow. having a panic attack. This is like two weeks. No, this is a week ago. This is literally a week ago. It's like the worst panic attacks I had in my fucking life right before I came here to LA. And yeah man and i just wrote that song like in in like three or four minutes I are just, you I just are you like writing in a notebook putting it in your phone no, I, I, I put it on my phone and then i'd like prop up my phone and like try to stay right over the mic and like have my phone there so i can just like re i don't know or put it on my like laptop how do screen. you flush out songs are you writing every last lyric or you have an idea for a hook no, or no, you, I, you listen I, to I the have beat to, first I have to hear the like beat what's first. the process I can't, okay. I can't just like i can always write like catchy stuff without a beat but then like i don't know how to put a beat onto that so it's always been like kind of a pointless thing to do for me uh, i don't have like access to producers who can right, just manifest can, like, my dreams and i'm not like, good enough for producing producer around your exactly it has to be the yeah. other way maybe maybe if i eventually signed to like a major and it's like a good deal or whatever and i have like access to all the things that i'd like then i could start doing stuff like that right and i think i'd really create some crazy shit like that but for the time being yeah like i just heard this beat and I mean, I sit on most of my beats for months before I finally resolve what I do with them. But when I finally resolve what I do with them, I write it in like 10 minutes. And you're getting these beats in email. From yeah, yeah. Just, just from homies, man. Just like if I've, I've gotten like random beat packs from like Jackie Boy, Van Beats. I can literally continue going and I'm not going to because there's like yeah. 50 people I should name. So you, you know who you are. Thank you. Uh, 
I was split like my beats uh, or my my songs with like the producers and stuff. We like, saying a fifty fifty split here. Yeah, yeah. So for those, I mean, that, that's the SoundCloud. That's why. That's why we. Right. That's why we doing SoundCloud. But like, if once you're on like a, once you're like industry or whatever, like I'm already gonna have to start asking for like different splits and stuff just because like it's just I don't know. It's just the way it should go. But I also, I don't know if that's completely. Yeah, I guess it matters the producer. Yeah, I mean like. Like yeah, I said, that's another the, all like, the producers that I've been working with. Talk we yeah, all the camera. producers that I've been working with recently are like my homies, and so it's just like you know we both put in effort into this. Like I don't want to overcomplicate shit. Fifty fifty. Well, like, yeah. th- that's a really good thing because before Spotify, when SoundCloud rappers were uploading their music on SoundCloud and weren't making any money, but they were touring off and making merch, the producers were like fucked. But now it's good with Spotify. Everyone seems to get some sort of split. It's generally feels yeah. like it's fifty fifty. So, so so the new new song yeah i just i wrote it real quick and like i just was just how i've been feeling and i was like let me write something catchy that's also deep you know like the, not deep in the sense of like you know fake fake deep but like some shit that like i really feel this way but i want to keep it as simple as i can i don't want to go like you know too verbose with my shit you know just like you know just feel like you know it was just the song is what it is you know it stands for itself i think it speaks for itself and it had a great uh, sample from Balance and Composure that I cleared with song, uh, with John Simmons. Thank you, John. Uh, I I still want to give them a cut, and he Who's refused. The nicest guy, John Simmons. I have not met. I've not met someone who is just that nice to me off the rip. You know, like I've met people that have been eventually that nice to me after like getting to know them. But like John was, he's always been extremely nice to me. For like, even though I'm like a, I, I was like when I first met him, I was just like this like pesky little bastard you know? like, and i still kind of where'd you guys meet we met at little narnia's house mm-hmm. little narnia's yeah. a big homie of mine yeah he uh he and i like i've slept on his couch like multiple times like, he's put me up man like he's he's like driven me places i need narnia in la little narnia fire man. right should, right check him out no he's, he's i great. know who that is i want to clarify that you weren't sleeping on john simmons couch no i was not sleeping on because if you're sleeping on john simmons couch it's like wow no through, through narnia i met a bunch of people like i met I met a tattoo artist who's also a producer named Sean Lindauer. He has high seas tattoo on Melrose. Um, I've met Mercy. She's a, a a vocal artist. She's very good. And I met John. And that's that's I guess about. It. I met his roommates. I met Narnia's roommates. But Narnia's a really good homie of mine. He's just not really uh, in like kind of like you said like our little group. Right. Just because he just isn't like he just i mean he doesn't really show up for stuff but like also those groups kind of define themselves yeah like it just has a way of working itself out i don't know if it's the spotify related artists have but it has a way of figuring itself out but uh, speaking of little narnia actually i'm gonna him and garden are like the two people i told the the people in russia who are booking me i was like those are the two people i I, like if i could choose they probably are gonna be like they they don't have russian audience but right i don't know but th- those are the two people I'd want to have come with me. Cause like I, I dude, I owe so much to Lil Narnia for real, man. Like his music's amazing. Like I wish he would just like release more. I think he released an album recently, but like I, th- I really wish that he would release like more shit. And like, I, I don't know. I look up to him a lot, man. He's a really good dude. So yeah. Shout out Narnia. Shout out Narnia. Dude. So Big shout out Narnia. anxiety. Yeah. Is that the first song from a new project? It's just a song you decided to upload. No, it's just a song I was feeling and, and, uh, it's done pretty well. It's gotten like a hundred thousand plays in a week on SoundCloud, so like it's been resonating with people. And I I'm guess. sure the Spotify numbers are great. Nah, not really. No, people fuck with me on like either something pops off on SoundCloud or it pops on Spotify. Well, also, I assume you're not being actively playlisted. I have. I'm on like a. I'm on the teardrop playlist for a song I did as a feature for somebody that I like. Uh, for James Colt, uh, for like from like a year ago. That interesting. That I like. I recorded on a on a usb mic this is like back when i was just starting wait so music. with anxiety it yeah. seems like you're slipping in slipping into a sound maybe finding yourself a little more what's the plan for the next project just trying to make the best shit i can like i have i can actually after this i can show you all the beats that i'm planning to put on that project but um yeah i just like i want to really mull over it and make sure that it's perfect i'm actually like for the first time in ever I'm spending money on like mixing because I'm like, I'm not going to mix my shit anymore. Like, it's just, it's not up to par. And I really want to make this shit like as good as I can. Like, I want to finally feel proud of something I've made, you know? So 
I'm finally about to like drop like a rack on like mixing this whole fucking project because I'm not playing around, dude. Like this is fucking important. A rack to me. on the projects it is that's a good rate. I mean, yeah, that's cheap as fuck. Actually, <laughs> for a, anyone who doesn't know music, like that's actually really cheap. Um, I got really lucky. Uh, my manager Dylan, who's also Garden's manager, he hooked it up. I finally have a manager. This is big news. Whoop de doo. It's about time, dude. Yeah, I guess. Uh, There's no reason why someone at your level should be dealing. Everyone's with gonna be like, "Oh, he's a plant now. Yeah. He's got an in- indie manager. <clears throat> plant. Fuck him. <laughs> Canceled. You know." Is your manager in like indie in terms of independent or indie in terms of the industry? Yeah, like he's he's like with a a, a small company. Like oh, the, but like the, he doesn't work for like a record label. No, he does not That's work for a record label. Listen, I'm everyone not, get a I'm manager. Yeah, you should. Everyone manager's get a lawyer. Help, man. Everyone lawyer's get a fucking. Help, man. If you can afford it, get an accountant. I don't have that. Do you have an LLC? No, I know I should. Do you that. have a business bank account? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, well, we will continue we that talk, talk later. Yeah. So I are, mean, like. You are you, so this new project is it yeah. going to be a departure is it going to be the next step are you working with people in the scene still is there going to be features no from features. garden no, know, features. no features i just like my big thing with features is i never want to ask my friend the only people i would really want to feature on my stuff are either people i can't get on a feature or people that are my friends i just never want to ask my friends for a feature because i feel like they're going to be like this is my own insecurity and i know none of them would actually think this but i feel like they'd be like Oh, he's only asking. He's only my friend just to ask me mm-hmm. for this feature, like just to bolster his plays. Or like, I know they wouldn't think that, but like, right. my inner insecure voice is just like, I can't ask them for shit, bro. Because like, they're already my friends. Like, it's so hard to be my friend. Anyone who knows me and is my friend will tell you, like, it's not easy to deal with me, especially for prolonged fucking periods of it's time. It's actually interesting because I've we've known each other on the internet and we've talked on the internet and I've known of you for a while now, but we've officially been text friends. For about four days mm-hmm. and you're already checking in on me i put up a meme that's a joke you think it's serious you're checking in on me it's true i mean where like, does that come from of you being like you're clearly an empath i don't know man you like ooze empathy shout out sad chill youtube channel me and him had a little chit chat before this podcast my <laughs> when i was a kid i was the opposite like i was like I don't want to say like a fucking psychopath, but like when it, like my bullies like would like bully me and shit, and then you know they'd like shove me around and shit, and then like in the middle of like class, I would like say like the f- most fucked up shit to them. Like like I don't. The one thing I'm really not the one thing, but like one of the things I'm really good at is like I have a really good read on people. Like I know when as soon as I meet someone, like if I like them or not. I have a generally pretty good idea what people think about me without them having to say anything to me directly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's cool. No, it's cool. And I have like this level of awareness about just like people. I have like relatively high emotional intelligence, I guess. But basically, like I can see people's insecurities too, because I have so many of my own. Like I'm trying to read other people's. And so when I was a kid, like I would, my bullies would like fuck with me at lunch. And then like we'd go back in the classroom and like, they wouldn't be reading as fast as I would. would and I would tear them I would apart. fucking go into them. I'd be like, what are you fucking like stupid? Like I would just be a really bad person, but you know, they're bullying me. So fuck them. I don't feel bad about it. But I realized that like I get, like I said, like it's kind of like, you can kind of flip that on its side to the other and side of the spectrum and be really supportive. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you, if you ask any, anyone who's seen me around like animals and shit, like, like I don't know, man, like I can, I could sit and like pet a cat for literally four hours straight, and that's not it's like a good an thing. It's on that side of the spectrum and not the other side. What like kill a cat for four like, hours straight? I was a little scared where that's going. No, I, oh no, like torture. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, what I'm saying is like around around anyone or anything that deserves love, if that makes sense. Like I'm more than willing to give out as much of it as I can. Like for instance, like you know, you you didn't reach out to me like we reached out to each other, I guess. Like, I don't know, fucking, I probably reached out to you first, but you know, we've cultivated this relationship. And then I saw you post something on Twitter that I was like, Oh, he's actually like distressed right now. And you've done nothing to me that would indicate otherwise. So I'm like, this man deserves not love in the sense of like, "Mm, let's fuck. Right. You know, I'm like, you know, this guy fucking deserves some love. Like what the fuck is going on here? I also have an interesting internet presence as of late where, there's a lot going on behind the scenes with Masquerilla right now, but the social media and stuff maybe isn't too active. So when I maybe. do put up a meme that's a little left field, yeah, say, yeah, it's oh, just wait, like, I, don't, I should reach I don't out know to if him. This is a joke or not, right. right? So it's like whenever I see 
people that I care about to any degree in distress, like I'm, yeah, I'm there for them. Like I definitely, like I said, like my goal in music, it's, it's like when I say like, I want to be a big musician, it's not cause like I want to have like clout, bro. Like if I wanted clout, I'd get a fucking massive face tat, like do a bunch of like weird shit online, do some like boom gang esque right. shit, make some meme songs, like, you know, throw TikTok a bag and I blow up. Like I understand how to blow up. I'm just, I'm not interested in that type of shit. I'm, I really want to like ameliorate people's problems. And I know that that's like maybe an arrogant goal in life, but it's like, or like a savior complex thing or whatever the fuck. But you know, like I said, I saw you in distress and I was like, or in fake distress. And I was like, right. I, man, I got to reach out to him. And it's the same with all my friends, man. Like I'm, I'm really concerned about people that I care about. And like, I, I don't ever want to be like this force of like negativity on people ever again. Cause like the thing is like, if you have a conscious, so if you're a psychopath or like, you know, some serial killer, you don't, you don't have that inner voice. that's like, dude, don't do this. Right? right. I have that inner voice. So like, even when I would fuck with those bullies, it would fuck with me and they deserved it. I'd still be like, you're my, something in my soul would be like, yo, you're tearing yourself apart inside doing this to these people. Like doing these evil actions is, is inflicting damage to like mm. your own state of being. So it's like, that's why like, I never want to be that negative force in people's lives. And I want to channel all that like darkness that I have inside of me or whatever you want to call it, like into something that's light, into something that's positive. Cause like, otherwise, otherwise you just get consumed by that shit, man, you know? And it's, I don't want to be like dramatic or whatever, but that's just how it is. Well, I mean, do you have any advice for young kids trying to get involved in music, trying to get particularly don't. involved in this scene? Uh, oof. Doing this isn't for everyone. Not everybody has the aptitude or the ability to make good music. I'm not implying that I make good music by saying that. I'm just saying that, like, some people, no matter how hard they work, just that's not what they're meant to do, so to speak. Now, if you're willing to work really hard and you have, like, even the, a drop of talent, you can make it. But you have to you have to work your ass off. Like this shit was not fucking e- like it's gotten easier now. Like the bigger you get, the easier it gets, kind of right. like, to a degree. Right. Uh, in terms of at least the labor put in, things kind of fall into place a little easier. Yeah, a little bit. Like I mean, like do you think Uzi Vert would have a problem like saucing a beat from a massive producer? Like, right. No, like you know? every last step is in a battle or a struggle. Things get a little easier, yeah, but then there's some yeah. things that are so hard. But you gotta put in a massive amount of work. You have to understand marketing to like some degree uh you can't just bite people and then like then because i'd rather listen to the people you're biting than you you know like try to create your own sound it's not going to come overnight you're obviously going to be inspired by other people everyone is no Mm -hmm. one comes out of the gate with an original sound like no one's first song they ever make is something completely original you know what i mean does not happen ever uh has never happened will never happen because humans are creatures that innately copy that's how we learn uh with that said like i said you know find your own sound and you know if it doesn't work out you have to make the call whether or not it's worth not giving up or it's or it's actually a smarter decision to pursue something else because like the same way like for instance like you know lil zan was a photographer before he was a rapper and i know that that's a really odd circumstance to bring up because it's just like kind of came out of nowhere or whatever right but it's like you know he that's not a good example but like there are artists that did one thing before and they realized they should have been artists and they did that and it worked and there are artists that failed as artists and did something else and were really successful at that right like i know musicians that thought were like fuck man i'm just not good enough at this and they started like little businesses yeah. and they made fucking um, incredible amounts of money like you know? in the same way that you messaged me as mascarilla mm-hmm. i have a lot of message uh messages of kids will message me mm-hmm. and they'll say hey man check out this song and i'll scroll scroll up the messages because mm-hmm. we haven't in- interacted yet and then there's a message from like two years ago it's like hey man i'm a photographer can you check out my photos and i'll scroll up two years later i mean two years earlier it's like hey dude like i just started this blog like i yeah. think there's really something here do you have any advice yeah so it's like you also have to understand like when trends shift like if you're going to start a blog right now like i don't i don't know how well that's going to do not you the know, best in idea the, in the current right in the current like uh atmosphere maybe like a youtube channel yeah it's like you know you got to find Here's what I will say. You know what? I'll give you the don'ts of music. 
if you want clout, if you want money, if you want bitches or whatever the fuck people think you get from music, you're not going to get it from music. Like you can, it's potent, like it's how, from how, the peripheral. Yeah. Of- like that's what you see. But like, bro, if, if you're like, mm, my quickest path to these successes that mm-hmm. I've orchestrated in my head that I've been told or what success is, is music. It's just not true. You know, like if you, the quickest path to, to getting money, man, is like, I don't know. Learn to play poker really, really well. And go do that. You'll be a fucking multimillionaire. Or but it's like, study and be on Jeopardy. Yeah, study and be, study a lot. Be on Jeopardy. Yeah. Play trivia games on the fucking internet. You know. But like, yeah. Don't don't fucking definitely don't do music because like you want quote unquote clout or you want attention. You know what I mean? Like, I think the I think the key is to do what you love. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But it's like. I don't know. Sometimes people love the wrong thing. You know what I mean? Like, right. I th- I think, but that's that's kind of a a condescending position to have. So like, I don't I don't say that like that earnestly. You know, like obviously pursue music if you want to pursue music, but like, you know, just don't pursue music because don't pursue it for like the wrong reasons. Like you can even argue that I pursued it for the wrong reasons by just seeing like, you know, bones and young lean and being like, these guys are fucking crazy. Like, Whoa, right. you can do this on the internet. I want to try this out. But the thing is that like, this was never my, like I started music just as like an outlet, right? Like this is never like, I want to make music cause I want Instagram followers or cause I want people to care. Back when I started music, I didn't even have an Instagram for my page. You know what I mean? Like it was just a SoundCloud and I would just talk to people on SoundCloud messages. Right. And so like I said, like, you know, just just make sure your heart's in the right place and make sure it's like you're doing something that you enjoy doing, that you actually enjoy doing. Like, I love the process of making songs. Like, mixing a song is so fun to me. Recording a song is like a math problem. It's just like something just like, it just gets me off. And like, I fucking love making music. It's so enjoyable. Like, talking to the producer being like, no, change this note here. You're sweating in the fucking studio. It's like 4 a.m., and you smell like shit and you finally, finally got the take you wanted. To me, that's just like, I love that shit. But like, if you do music and you don't love that shit, you're, just, you're in the right. wrong fucking It's just game. not going to last. Yeah, it's just, so, you're, you're in the wrong game. What do you see your future holds? What's the next year look like? Are you signed to a label? I'm no sure. Label. I'm sure the labels are hitting you up. The, there have been a few labels. I'm uh, sure. Of they're, course. They're all good people. We've had good conversations. I don't I don't want to sign to a label. I don't want to sign to a label until I have better leverage with which to sign. Mm-hmm. You know, I really want if I want to if I sign to a label, I really want them to care about me and see me the same way I see myself as being like a Billboard top 10 artist, like legitimately. And, you know, people may say that's arrogant, you're aiming too high, whatever, but it's like no one ever got anywhere by aiming low. So, I don't fucking you know, if it's arrogant, if I'm just some fucking pissant who shouldn't be making music or whatever, it's like, cool, but I'm still going to be doing this shit, like, no matter what. But, yeah, I, I'm not signed to a label. Where I see myself in a year, I genuinely have no idea, man. Like, I, I can't see myself a week from now, you know? Um, I, like, the aspiration is, like I said, like, just, I don't know, there's just something about me that just, like, really wants to influence, like, the earth because it's just like what other purpose do i have here if i'm not improving people's lives and i've already i guess done that to a certain degree like when i get messages where people are like yo i was thinking about killing myself and then i listen to you and i know a lot of artists get this you know i'm not saying i'm like unique in this but a lot of artists get like you know hey you like help me get through anxiety or like you know i was gonna fucking kill myself because like someone left me or you know just things are bad in my life and you got me through it. Or it's like, yo, my mom died too. Like, you know, your music gets me through wow. it. Like I get those messages and I'm like, I'm doing the right thing. And like I said, like I use, you know, bones, peep X fucking, I don't know, all these other massive dudes who like had the same, I guess, humble beginnings and then like became kind of larger than life. Like I know that I'm never going to be that same larger than life character in the sense of like, I'm never going to have that mystery about me. Like, I'm always going to be transparent, but like, that's my thing. Like, I'm the everyman. Like, I'm not the fucking cool dude that wears the designer shit that you, you know, that has all these girls on it. Like, I'm not trying to sell that image because that's just not who the fuck I am. 
Like I'm a fat nerd from high school who just like ended up in this position because it was the only thing I ever did in my life that I didn't hate doing. And I ended up love, I ended up loving it. And it's just been like a massive calling for me. But like, yeah, like, I, I mean, I, I don't know where I, where I see myself in a year. Like I, I really like, I obviously have these massive dreams, but it's, it's not up to me to, to kind of place myself there. It's up to like everyone who consumes the things that I make, you know? And I'm just, like I said, my goal, my real goal, it's not to be big. It's literally to make the best shit that I possibly can and then have everything happen from there. You know, if I make the best shit I can and everyone's like, fuck this guy, then fuck this guy, dude. You know, like I can't change that. I can only control what I can do. And what I can do is just like make the best shit I can. That's really it. So, wow. yeah. I'm not trying to be like deep or anything. I'm just no, being dude. straight up. I don't think that's deep at all. I think that's like the most rational thing, opinion I could have, you know? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm so like, I don't know. I don't know how to interpret my, myself. I overthink my shit. This is so awkward to everybody watching this shit, but whatever. That's, a, that's my point. I'm fucking, I'm not perfect. I don't have this fucking flawless image. Of, you know, I'm, I'm hearing like it's a like unbuttoned really shirt interesting because you cut me off. I was about to end the interview and you ended on such a point, you know, but then you kind of blew it, but you're right. You're not perfect. You kind of blew it. But thank you for coming by, man. Of course, man. Appreciate you having me, man. Wait, hold on here. Cheers. I, you're not supposed to cheers water, but Dude, you don't even oh, have any left. Is that bad luck? Yeah, allegedly. Oh, God damn it. <laughs>